one, one of the things I've been thinking about is like we, we haven't discussed what we're going to call this series. Oh, it doesn't actually be two or three. But it's different. We've got, oh, we've got people. Yeah. So people, like real people, not like humanoids. Yeah. Welcome. Who are you and why? Oh, can I start with the why question? <laughs> yeah, go on then, go on then. <laughs> no, no, so I'm Eva and I work at uh, Developer Relations for Chrome. And I'm here at I.O. to enjoy the beautiful weather and, you know, other participants and also to give talks and interact with people. A lot interact with people. I know, it's a lot of interaction, isn't it? Like, yeah, uh, it's... yeah. By the end of the day, I kind of, my, my introvert self tries to hide inside. Uh, but actually, it's very worthy yeah. as well. So it's, it's like I cool. really enjoy it, but I also need to recuperate a lot afterwards, usually. It, it's a weird part of this job, isn't it? We take people who are traditionally introverted, and I, I, I think we'd all include ourselves yeah. in that, and we go, what are we going to do for a living? Oh, we'll go on stage, right? And it, it's just... <laughs> Talk to people all the time. Yeah, and it's just all of the energy just zapped away at once, and then just go and... We have to go and, like, Lying fetal in a coffin, position, yeah. Fetal position in a coffin. <laughs> but you um, see, it's a bit difficult. Like, totally different if you talk to a group of extroverts and you hang out with extroverts. With introverts, it's different. They could just say hi, hi, and everybody goes their own way, and everybody's okay with that. So yeah, that's the thing. Like, you sit in a circle, all looking like at your phone. People understand, you know. So one of the one of the things that like. I encounter at these kind of events because I, I walk past people I sort of vaguely know or have met before, and something will like will, you know walk past each other and go, "Hey, Mike," and, and like, "Hey, Jake," and now we're locked in, and it's that sort of thing. It's like, what, do you want to go for a picnic? Like, what, what, what's, what's the next step? <laughs> I thought step? it's the thing we, where you like, you pretend you haven't seen the other person, you just keep walking, you just shame, look at your feet, <laughs> and you're like, oh, so you're trying to avoid people? Like, oh yeah, I, yeah, I, that I have too. been guilty of that. Like sometimes when I'm too too lower energy, and I'm like, oh, that's a person. No, but I'm I'm happy with the the, the meeting and the talking, but it's like when to break it off. Yeah. And what's the rule there? Like you say, I would just say, oh, I have a thing. Oh, a thing. thing! Good! Magical thing, yeah. I, I've, got a, I've got a thing. And I'm so glad, you with know, uh, Google is go ahead of our needs. Have you seen the demo with the phone call, you know, where the AI oh. is doing phone call for you? In the future, we can just send that to the conference. <laughs> I mean, one thing is that, you know, all this technology behind it is so amazing and, and everything. But what amazes me the most is that oh, there must be so many introverts in the world <laughs> if they made a technology for people like me. This is, I finally feel included, you know? So, um, what have you been doing? What, why, what, what, what have you been talking what, what, about? Why, what, 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 what and why? What, why? We already had what, what, one and why question. What, what, so. why? What, 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 well, it started that we built an app with Adi and, uh, and it was crap. <laughs> <laughs> but that was no, no, Adi's no, no, fault, no, no. that was Adi's no, fault, No, it was right? an amazing app. Like okay. You could go and check Google Doodles and you could play them and it was all super interactive and nice, but it was just not performant. And when you do stuff with Adi and, and folks, it needs to be performant. So they made I fix it and we learned quite a bit out of that. Um, yeah, so we've been sharing that uh, throughout the talk. It's actually much easier to run into performance troubles than we originally thought. So yeah, <laughs> oh, Tada! It's well, we pretty your talk easy in, to in the make. A... Yeah, what kind of performance problems were you hitting then? Yeah. Well, a lot of stuff comes from the fact that when you develop things, it, it lasts over some period of time. And after some time, you don't remember what you did before and so on. So things accumulate, right? Uh. And then you just forget. And we've been working with some tools that help you remind, like what, what might go wrong. Uh, yeah, if there were no tools, everybody was happy. Nobody had any scores, right? <laughs> um, but now, like, there are tools that can remind you of, for example, I don't know, the library you forgot to, you know, kick out because you're not using it anymore. Oh. Um, about the images that are twice as big because you said, okay, I'll optimize them later and this later just never happened. Yeah. You know? that, so it's all about like process. It's, it's less about the code and the samples and the techno techniques you use in the code. It's more about the process, like how to fit your performance habits into your overall kind of... So how big of a role does Lighthouse play? in that? Is that something we're basically we're triaging if Lighthouse does everything, reminds you of everything that needs it to remind you off? There are new audits landing each quarter in Lighthouse yeah. and it's getting better and better job of giving you just an overview of yeah. what you could be improving. And that's pretty neat because usually you don't want to improve everything. Like you just need to pick and choose. So if you have a whole list, you can go and say, okay, apparently this one, this one, and this one is cheap, so I'll do it now. And this one and this one are important, so I do it now. And these are expensive and not so important, so I just ignore them, right? 
So it's, it's getting better yeah. and it's really um, a good guidance that can kind of lead you through that process. So what were, what were the things that, like, the issues that you kind of punted until later on? What was the stuff that was, like, really, going to be really complex to solve versus the stuff that was really easy? Well, it's generally you want to add a feature, like you want to have some images on the page, and you want to land it as soon as possible. So you add a feature and you forget to optimize it at the same time. Right. right? Yes. So it's like the stuff, if you don't do it great at the beginning, uh, straight away, uh, you say, okay, I'll do it first, like initial version, agile style, and then I'll come back <laughs> later and make it better. This later might never happen because, for example, you're preparing for Google I.O. or something oh, like that. So. Yes. so is there is there a difference like between the, uh, like working towards like performance stuff versus working on features? Because you, you've been doing sort of both, right? Yeah, that's the thing. So we decided to, to, to write this up without taking performance much into consideration and see how it is to retroactively go back and fix those things, right? Like that was the kind of exercise. It's probably very realistic because I think yeah. most teams work in like, let's get the functionality first yeah. and optimize Ooh, later. But then it puts you in danger of not doing that last step. I know, it's, but, like, but, it's like, oh, but, we'll do accessibility at the end and then, sure. and then people go, oh, the project's and overrunning, let's cut it there. And it, oh. But, but also, there's people throwing around the whole thing, you know, premature optimization is a root of all evil. So you have people are trying to follow all this conflicting advice. I mean, so it's of really course, it's really good to like start with designing from for performance first and it really leads to great results. Uh, but I mean, sometimes it does not happen. Like you have a lot of stakeholders in your project. You have your boss, you have your uh, marketing team, you have your other folks, you know, yeah. and, and you need to kind of juggle that. And sometimes you are really realistically in this state where, where you have an app and you want to make it more performant and you need to do retroactive work. So we just wanted to explore uh, that a little bit and see if Lighthouse is a really good tool that can lead you um, to some gains there, and apparently it is. So where, when you were developing this app, did you basically give feedback to the Lighthouse team and saying like, this did not get caught by Lighthouse, fix it kind of thing? Yeah, so there, there, were, there were some areas where uh, we were pointing stuff like this. And fortunately, most of the time, the answer was, wait a quarter or two, like it's in progress. <laughs> we're, we're getting there. We know it, it will be there soon. So yeah, it's a very dynamically developed tool. So you've been in the, the in, in the sandbox as well, right? This oh, yeah. the area of I.O. where we kind of got they all the... They have stickers apps. there, so you know. Is, why why is it called there? a sandbox? Because you, it's not like... When I think of sandbox, either it's an actual box of sand, yes. or, it's, or it's like a metaphor for where you go to build things. But that's also... No, no, it's about faces. Have you seen kids going into the sandbox and the face they make at that point? Like, pure joy? Well, in England oh. we call it a sandpit, which sounds like... <laughs> it sounds like where well, you might die like, as yeah. well. It's, it's, it's a difference between like you know, put, like your kid, put your kid in the sandpit. <laughs> Kid's gone. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> well, it's not quicksand. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, the quicksand. Do you pit. know? <laughs> yeah. Well, but like I had a sandpit growing up, um, but we also had cats. So the sandpit was not a fun place to be. Oh. <laughs> so, so when people are saying that like, the sandbox, that's all I'm thinking of. Is like, oh, got it. Oh, Depends on the definition of... of fun, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> in, in the north of England, like we'll take any fun we get. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, modeling clay. No. Uh, <laughs> so, what, so who have you been meeting there? What kind of things have you have you been doing? Um, I've met quite a few uh, Google developer experts. And it's pretty cool because they have so much passion and they usually specialize in some narrow area. Uh, and, you know, I can't like know about every single nook of web. So it's always very enlightening to see all this passion. But knowing all about all of the web, that's that's something I, I, I remember having to let let go of. And I was talking like 15 years ago, like I kind of felt like I knew a reasonable amount of the web. This is kind of in the IE6 days when the web essentially stalled. But then like new things were being added. So when we sort of get IndexedDB, uh, WebGL and that sort of thing, and and I, I panicked at first, thinking, I, how am I going to learn all I of this? I feel young now. Right, but it's like <laughs> you, you don't have to learn all of this, right? Yeah, that's why a lot of people are choosing their specialization path these days. I think like web performance is one possibility. Other people focus more on the backend side of things, and you know, like I mean, the web is is broad, and there's space for all type of specialists, I guess. Yeah. And that's where I see part of our job most, to try and figure out which APIs are relevant to everyone. Stuff like, for example, CSS Grid is probably useful to everyone, and everybody should take a look at that. It is so useful, and I feel like I only know like 1% of it. And, and it's, it's most, still powerful. It's, it's but... probably enough for mo most of the time. Right. But then there's like the niche, like, do you really need to know WebGL or WebUSB? 
You don't if you don't have a use case. So Good, because I don't know either of those two things. <laughs> Thank you for validating my skills. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's, and that's something where we've been trying to also get better at. And with projects like these, because in these projects, you kind of figure out Grid was useful here, and I can see it being useful in more use cases. Or you find out I had to resort to feature X, even though I don't think it should be the case. Can we do something to make it easier for developers? I think what is cool about the web is there is a lot of community around different you know, areas. And it's, it's not a matter of being a specialist in every single area so that you can have a cool project. It's when you have a project and you have a you know, particular problem to solve on that project, you can go out and find information that is relevant to you yeah. on a given uh, particular moment in time. So as long as this information is findable, you'll be fine. You just need to know how to uh, look for it. I mean, it's good though that we're keeping an eye out on like that. You have people like you who actually field test this stuff, yeah, so that it doesn't it gets sooner sooner than later. English is hard today. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's getting late. Eight days, this type of things, yeah. <laughs>